Hi, AP Calc BC students. We're going to take a look at example four from 9.6. It's really our third motion problem, but the good thing about this one, as you can probably tell if you've got the notes packet, we're not going to do any graphing, but we're going to work on probably one of the last things that we really have to discuss, and that is moving from an acceleration vector to a position. Let's take a look at our example four. And if we read the problem, it says a particle starts at rest from the point negative 1, 2 with an acceleration vector of a of t equal i plus 2j. Find the location of the particle at time 2. Well, if you've done your homework for topic 9.5 and have practiced the integration techniques that we discussed, this is going to look very eerily familiar. You have to think about how do you move from acceleration to go all the way up to position. And it's a progressive step that takes you to velocity and eventually to position. And we move up, of course, by integrating. And so that's what we're going to be doing. But as you integrate each time, you're going to pick up some constants plus c's that you have to evaluate. And we have given clues for that. And we'll talk about the language that helps you with those clues here in a moment. But let's start by moving from our acceleration to our velocity by integrating the acceleration. And so that's what's going to happen. Probably don't have to write this integrate acceleration with respect to t if you know that that's what's going to go on. But we've got the integration of i, which is really 1 times i. Now, with respect to t, that will give you t times i. However, I, before I want to plop, plop that I in there, want to make sure I add my first constant of integration. So I would like to write that as t plus c1. We move on to the next component. The integration of 2 with respect to t is, of course, 2 times t. And then we're going to add our next integration constant, c2. And of course, we're going to toss a j in there for good measure. Now, we don't want to continue integrating without knowing these values of c1 and c2. So there should be a clue given to us in the problem. And that clue begins with the, 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 the phrase, a particle starts at rest. Well, the word starts implies time equals 0. At the start, that's what your time is, right? And then your word rest implies that the velocity at time 0 is 0. And that can be written as a vector with both components of 0, 0i zero plus 0j. Zero so we're going to use those two ideas together here and say that the velocity at time 0 is, replace this t with 0, and you get c1 times i. Replace this t with 0, and you'll get hmm, c2 times j. And we were told that all of this must be equivalent to 0i plus 0j. Well, that is a little perhaps disappointing because you feel like you've wasted your time in that c2 and c1 are both 0. But I don't want to think of it as you wasting your time. It's not the case. We had to find those, and we now know them. So now v2, or v of t, sorry, truly is just t i plus 2tj. And I think we can work from this guy now to find our position. So the position vector r of t we know to be defined as the integration of v of t with respect to t. So we're going to do a very similar process. We integrate t and we get t squared over 2. Don't forget you'll need your constant of integration. I'll just pick up where I left off and call this one c3 times the i component. And when we integrate 2t, we get t to the second plus our fourth constant, which is now multiplied by j. Now we want to look for another clue that mentions what's happening with position. Well, still at the start, when time is 0, we know that the position is at the point negative 1, 2. When it says it starts from the point, that's at the point. So r of 0 is just the vector negative 1i plus 2j. And again, this position, this ordered pair, can be thought of as a vector. 
And the reason that's the case is because a vector, negative 1, 2, whether you write it like this or in that component form, is just simply a place that serves as the tip of the vector right here. And that point is sort of synonymous with the name of that vector. And so we're OK to think of it as such. Now we're going to say at time 0, let's let these t values be 0, which again wipes them out. And you just have C3i plus C4j is equivalent to our negative 1i plus 2j. Now, we hopefully didn't assume that C3 and C4 were all going to be 0 as well, because nothing could be further from the truth. C3 is negative 1, and C4 is positive 2. So what that says is our final position vector, in all its wonderful glory, is t squared over 2 minus 1 times i plus t squared plus 2 times your j. And now we can finally answer the question. Find the location of the particle at time 2. So we just simply plug 2 in for t. Now 2 squared over 2, of course, is 4 over 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we have 1 times i. And then 2 squared plus 2, that's going to be a 6 times j. Now one thing that you may not realize is all of the various ways that you can present your final answer. A vector would be perfectly fine, whether it's written in ij form or this vector bracket component form. Or perhaps you're thinking, now wait a minute, find the location of the particle at time 2. That should just be an ordered pair. Well, you know what? That's perfectly suitable as well. And the reason is just like I said before, and I want to explain it again. 1, 6, we know, is this ordered pair right about here, let's say. If we were to define that as a vector, that just kind of shoots that vector right up to that point, And it basically accomplishes the same task. That's the point that lies on this equation. I should say <laughs> this equation here. We just use this very specific vector to get to that point. Hopefully that makes sense. Gives you a lot of freedom there. We got a few more videos in store for you. Want to make sure you check them out. Thanks for joining as always. We'll see you.